Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and I recently passed the third associate level certification from AWS which is AWS Developer Associate and in this video I'm going to tell you how you can pass the certification, how I prepared and who should get the certification. I'll tell you a little bit about my background first. So I come from a networking and infrastructure background. Uh, I did my CCNA, Network Plus, Linux Plus. So all the server stuff, networking stuff. And then my day-to-day -day job uh, consists of a lot of cloud environment and a lot of work on AWS specifically. That's why I'm getting, you know, one after another AWS certifications. The motivation behind this certification is I already had SysOps Ad Administrator Associate. I also have Solution Architect Associate. Uh, so I just wanted to complete this uh, trifora of uh, the AWS certification. So I just did it. Um, and I also wanted to learn a lot more about serverless technology because that is where the world is heading. Mostly, you know, when you talk about cloud, you talk about serverless stuff. You talk about Lambda, DynamoDB or these kind of services. That's why I just wanted to learn about these services. I did work with, did work with Lambda or uh, some of the services, but database, RDS, uh, cognito these services i haven't haven't worked with till now so i just wanted to learn all of them this was the main uh, reason to pursue this certification uh, this personally for me but if you are not a developer if you are an infrastructure engineer and you are not working on cloud you should not get this certification but if you are working in a cloud environment, you will face, especially in AWS, you will face scenarios where you require the knowledge of Lambda because even if you want to deploy a small script for some other service, you have to deploy that in a Lambda function. That will be much cost effective. That will be easier to deploy. Otherwise, you will have to deploy it inside a server, EC2 instance. Uh, you might be thinking that EC2 is free for 750 hours, but when you work on a production environment, you do work with a lot of script. You have to automate your infrastructure. You have to work with Lambda. You have to work with step functions. You have to work with, you know, uh, you have to store your data in DynamoDB tables. So for those kind of scenarios, if you, you know, if you want to learn that, or if you're working in a cloud environment, this certification is a very good way to start with all those serverless services. I hope this answers the question why you should get this certification. But let's move on to the next one, which is my strategy to pass this exam. The first thing I did, I always do, I go to udemy.com. You will get sale after a couple of days or once in a month at least. You'll get some sales where you'll get all the courses for almost you know $10 or $8, something like that. So you should get advantage, you should take advantage of those uh, courses. And there are a lot of good cloud courses on Udemy. Udemy is one of the best platform to learn cloud because anyways, for lab and other purposes, you will deploy your um, like all the lab and other activities in your own AWS account or Azure account uh, because it, it is free for one year, except for labs, just the coursework, just the PPTs, practice exams. Udemy is kind of the best way, at least if you're preparing for an AWS certification exam. And I think Stephen Marek, you might, might have heard of uh, this instructor. He's a very great instructor and I did uh, his U Udemy course um, for AWS Developer Associate exam, which is I will put uh, somewhere on the screen right now. So you can see like it covers almost everything, every nitty gritty detail about the exam. I also had a Cloud Guru subscription, um, but uh, I don't think they have a great course on this particular certification. I don't think they have uh, th that course is uh, enough for you to pass the exam because there are some details which you will get on the Stephen's course and it's great. Uh, it's very concise, clear to the point. If you have already done your one of the certification, you just have to watch like half of it. Uh, you can skip half of that course. That's the thing and PPTs are also great um, for this exam. So I will recommend that uh, or you can go with Neil Davis uh, because I took my practice exam uh, from Neil Davis uh, or you can also take from digital cloud training uh, that is his uh, website. But yeah, once you have finished your course, you have done the practice exam. So I was uh, my first practice exam, I did like 55, 60 percent. 
and then after some time it increased to 70 75 80 uh, almost 80 to 85 so i was getting 70 to 85 uh, consistently on those practice exams and stefan also uh, provides one practice exam with his course uh, you can go and look at that as well and uh, always after failing your uh, you know practice exam you can always look up the explanation of each of the question i also purchased uh, or used one of the Android app, which I will put in the screen right now. This app you can purchase, uh, you know, 10 or 10 sets of the exam of 10, 10 questions, I guess. And another great resource to uh, prepare for this exam. Next, we will uh, look at one more topic. So for this exam, there will be some top services, which definitely will come or 50, 60, 70% of the exam will come from these five to six services. My first service will be AWS Lambda, then DynamoDB, and then API Gateway, and then Cognito KMS. These five services and also cloud formation, these six, five, six services, uh, you can make a note, you have to do labs or practical exercises on these services almost the entire exam is covered with these services and also about server side means not serverless i was surprised that i got a lot of elb and auto scaling group questions so if you don't know about elb or auto scaling please do some labs deploy an uh, auto scaling group deploy a, uh, you know load balancer nlb clb or alb uh, gateway load balancer won't come in this exam but this ALB, CLB and NLB three versions of our ELB will come in this exam and there you will you will see a lot of questions from these topics in the exam which was quite surprising to me but anyways apart from these there are some very small services which might come like Kinesis, um, SQS, SNS, CloudWatch these services also you need but if you once you prepare these 10 services almost 10 to 12 services you are good for this exam mostly this exam uh, like the goal of this exam to test you on your serverless skills and also integration of your serverless services with other services like with lambda event bridge event bridge cloud watch your api gateway event bridge and your dynamo dv db and lambda these integration questions will come whenever you are going to uh, through the practice exam or through your course, uh, you might want to focus on these particular topics. This is it about my exam. Uh, so I have now cleared all three AWS associate level certification. In the future, I might make another video on uh, details of each of the exam and which one you should get according to your experience. So yeah, that's it for now. I hope you find this video very informative. Uh, so I'll see you in another video. Have a great one.